Hi and welcome to Mackenzie 4. This is the first time I'm going to do a bit of photography news because on my description it does say I'm going to talk about photography news. I do read um, Petapixel and all the different camera blogs and all that sort of stuff. The news that sort of come out mainly in the past week is the new Panasonic SH1 camera that's been announced that came out of nowhere and it's going to do 6K video. Now at the moment I'm using a 6D Mark II which only does full HD video, it doesn't even do 4K um, and I mean the, the Sony's do 4K at 8-bit but I'm, I'm not sure what bit rate the, the Panasonic's going to come out at, maybe it's going to do it at a higher bit rate um, which will give you better pixel density and stuff but that's yet to be fully listed and stuff but a 6k DSLR camera is insane obviously Sony must have something in the works for this because Sony provides the sensors for Panasonic so expect an announcement really soon from Sony when it comes to the next upgrade in the Sony Alpha AR line um, it's, well not AR line Alpha, probably an Alpha 4 um, I know they do the Alpha S, which is more video focused, but you get to see. So really in the next couple of months, I'd expect to see a major announcement by Sony regarding the retaliation to this, really, because they must have something in the works. They must do. I know the Panasonic SH-1 has a much bigger body to dissipate the heat, and it, can also, it also says that it may shut down during recording because to protect itself from heat buildup, so that is kind of a worry. The, the pricing is going to probably going to be about three thousand pounds for the body. Panasonic and Sony seem to be the new players in the mirrorless market. Expect them to take a much bigger market share in the next few years. And Panasonic kind of came is to me the the guys that have come out of nowhere. Um, Sony's generally been building its reputation ever since it bought Minolta which still bugs me to this day because I used to be a Minolta shooter back in the film days and the early digital days I had a Minolta Dynax 7D and I waited and waited and waited for that to be replaced and the, the thing was I had that camera then Minolta ceased production of all photography equipment and um, and I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? So I was waiting for someone to pick up. I waited and waited and waited and waited. And a week before Sony bought the rights to Minolta's camera lines and body setup, I started switching camera bodies. Sold all my Minolta gear because I was like, no one's going to pick up. It's just dead in the water. And started playing around with different brands. I mean, I went to Pentax, I went to Nikon, and eventually I ended up with Canon. I've been with Canon for the past, I don't know, 10 plus years and again, what everyone's talking about at the minute, their colour science, everything that they've got on the market at the minute is just fantastic. There's so many Canons out there that the second hand market is fantastic. I buy second hand gear rather than buying new, unless it comes to like the camera body and stuff. I got excited with the Canon Mark D, the Canon 6D Mark II because um, I had the Canon, the first full frame DSLR that I had was the Canon 6D Mark I um, and I bought that brand new on the day of release and it served me well. The image quality you get from it is just phenomenal, especially for stills. It, it came out as, like, when, when it came out people weren't impressed with the specs at all but it was mainly focused at a stills photographer which I'm mainly based at and trust me when I say this it can produce images way bigger than you can expect I have done exhibitions where I've printed 60 by 40 images from the files from the 6D Mark II and you have to get really close up to see any sort of pixel break up at all so that just i mean that tells you what kind of quality you can get from this so this pixel war that's going on at the moment where people are bringing out 
a 40 megapixel camera and Fuji have just brought out the, the 100 megapixel medium format camera although it's not full medium format it's slightly smaller but I'm not going to get into the argument at the moment you don't need that many megapixels unless you're going to be shooting for billboards and even then a couple of years ago Apple brought out a, a billboard that was shot on an iPhone 6s it really comes down to on the quality of the sensors that are being put in the cameras. It's not megapixel count that makes the quality of the photo, it's the quality of the sensor. And people seem to forget this a lot of the time. So, I mean, the quality of the sensor you're going to get from the bigger brands. If, if you buy a cheaper off-brand camera, you're going to get a lot more noise. You're going to get a lot, just a lot more crap quality image. I, kind of, I know I've kind of went way off the news at the moment. But as I say, it's my first news episode, so I can't, I'm going to go off on tangents. Um, the other thing I was going to say is, yeah, the, the, the Fuji have brought out this, well, it's on pre-order availability at the moment, is this 100 megapixel body um, with a, a, for the medium format. It's priced at just, well, a, a penny under £10,000. Uh, I think it's going to be $10,000 US, which is a phenomenal price for a digital medium format. Uh, I mean, I have a second-hand Hasselblad HD4 and the reason I got that is basically because I'm a photography nerd and I've always dreamed of owning a Hasselblad and the opportunity came up for me to get a Hasselblad so I went for it with both hands. It's a fantastic camera, it's very, very old now um, it goes on an old CCD sensor rather than new CMOS sensors, so I mean, quality comparisons. I get a much better tonal range because of the size of the sensor with the Hasselblad. But blowing up MA scale, I would say the difference between the Canon Mark D2 and the Hasselblad HD4, unless I'm going to be blowing up bigger than Billboard, is, is negligible. And you know, I have a wide format printer in my house. I've, I, I've got an Epson 9800 sitting in my living room that I use to print these massive prints. Um, and when you compare them side by side, it's, it's, the, it's really the tonal range that really sort of makes the difference between those two cameras. So un unless you're a serious, a serious enthusiast uh, or a pro that's needing the new Fuji, I can't see a, a massive, massive market for it. I mean, it's a fantastic step forward in bringing medium format and megapixel range closer to the consumer. I have, as I say, I'm a new channel. I'm not sponsored by anyone. Uh, at the moment, I'm probably getting like 10 views per video if I'm lucky. So it's going to take me a long time before people start sending me stuff to review it. Um, I would love to get my hands on the Fuji to have a play with it and see what it can do. Um, I would also love to get my hands on any camera for review or any photography equipment for review. Um, like I said in my last video, well, in the next video that's going to be published, I've just recorded them back to back. I did a first impressions of um, a new tripod that I just bought, um, a Manfrotto 290 Extra. Just a lighter tripod because weight is an issue. Um, I used to be a, a much younger, fitter man and I could carry lots of equipment up mountains. That is not the case anymore with uh, me getting a little bit older and the illness that, an illness that I have, which most of you know about if you watched the video, watched all the videos that I've put up so far. Um, I'm kind of wandering off on another tangent here, so I'm going to just cut it there. And yeah, that's my first episode of Photography News. I've probably missed out a ton of stuff um, about what's happened in the past week. But oh, also, before I go, you, the, the new thing also in photography news is finally the new Mac Pros have been released. And by all means, all the specs look phenomenal. Um, but they're going to be out of the price range of so many people they are designed for pros if you have that kind of money to spend to get these machines 
then you are working in the pro environment. If you're an enthusiast like me, or you're just an entry level pro where you're doing weddings for a thousand pounds and stuff like that, or if it, like two thousand dollars, you are not going to need that kind of machine. Really, I think it's aimed at cinematographers and um, editing houses rather than just average Joe sitting in his house. I mean, everyone I imagine will want one. Who wouldn't want one of those kind of machines in their home? But simply due to price, no one's going to be able to afford it. I mean, the monitor starts at $5,000 US. If you want the matte finish, that's another thousand dollars. And here's the kicker. If you want the stand for it, that's another thousand dollars. So to get the matte finish with a stand is seven thousand dollars as far as I believe. To get it with the glossy finish is six thousand dollars for the monitor. Now compared to the reference monitors that it's compared to, it's a really good deal. The ref the monitors they're comparing it to cost thirty-five thousand dollars. So on that scenario, yeah, it's fantastic. But for your average photography enthusiast and stuff like that, it's just a no-go. You're going to be looking at the six hundred pound BenQ monitors, which have amazing color depth and stuff, and going to be great for still photography anyway. Anything above that, when you're I mean, you, you got to look at, you know, dis depreciate, yeah, I can't even pronounce it, depreciating returns. The more money you spend, you're only getting a 1 or 2% in, improvement and stuff. And when it gets to that, you're talking about a 0.1% improvement when you're talking about the amount of, you know, quality that you're going to get back. If the opportunity ever comes for me to get that kind of quality, of course I'm going to grab it with both hands. But, but that day will hopefully come in the future. But for right now, I'm going to sign off and say thank you for watching the first episode of Mackenzie Photography News. Hopefully it wasn't a whole lot of drivel and you enjoyed it and you come back for the next one. So thanks again. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, um, past few days, I have been Netflix binging Star Trek Next Generation. Why the hell not? And uh, it's only in the past few days that I've been reminded my, by my children to get off my butt and start recording YouTube videos again. So uh, you can thank my children for that. And uh, once again, I apologize for not making videos earlier. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.